episode one of the 93, late 93, hard dash Vogue SE that's coming from a customer, David. Bodywork on it's really nice. Paintwork has survived all these years. SE, so it's got the sunroof on it. Some rare mosses growing on it, which Land Rovers generally like. It looks like it's having a roof rack on it, which has caused the rare moss situation. Tailgate, as is usual, they rot out. Telltale signs and all piles of rust on top of the bumper, they do that. Bodywork and paint, though, really nice all round on this car. Decent tyres, decent wheels. We've even got the little chrome caps on the wheel nuts. Look at that. Right. But we've got a couple of problems with this car. Um, first and foremost, it disgraced itself. It's driven all the way from Cambridge to South Devon yesterday. Um, drove all the way from South Devon to literally a mile up the road there, top of Schutzkamp, and uh, conked out. Well, it didn't conk out. You stopped it to have a look at the view, which, why well, wouldn't you? Because it's X1, it's just gorgeous. Um, and he couldn't restart, so I just I'll tell you, by the way, went up and towed it down. Now, so far, we have checked. We've got a spark, we've got a spark from the coil, and we've got a spark from the plug lead. Um, a little think about it while I dropped David off at the station, because he's on his way home now. He's left this with me to sort out. Um, and I know the air filter's not on it, I'm going to put the air filter back on. Um, but uh, yeah, you don't want to start at all. Now, coil's been wired in. So the fact we're getting the spark is good news. Um, crank's over quite happily. It's got a good battery on it. He's done a lot of work on this. He's uh, replaced all of the inner wings and everything. Done a really nice job with that. That's not falling off, is it? No, that's in. It's just the LPG um, settings. But it's not starting on LPG or petrol. You can see it's an SE. It's got the uh, traction control um, uh, modulator. Brake master cylinder up there. A bit different to uh, to my one, which doesn't have the traction control. Right, so let's see if we can get you going. There's a few things that I need to do. I mean, one of the things on this thing, it doesn't perform anywhere near as nicely as mine does. Uh, right, so enough gabbing on. We've got the key. Let's um, see if this time it wants to start because it's been an hour since. It broke down on us. Just let me wiggle the steering. Right. That's doing nothing. Right, next thing we need to do is I'm going to check on the fuel supply because these LPG systems are all well and good. Um, but they need the engine to fire before they open up the circuits to the solenoid. To the solenoid. There's one solenoid there. There should be another solenoid at this end of the pipe work. I can see the pipe going down there. I don't quite know where he goes to. Is that a solenoid over there? That's brake lines. I'll have to get my torch out, really, won't I? Right, so I found the solenoid. So the solenoid at the forward end of forward end of the um, the LPG line is down there on the inner wing. Not a problem. I've got mine mounted up, mounted up here, but then I've got the line coming right round to the front. Um, I've got the two wires, which are for all the solenoids. Typical blue and black. Just going to check the continuity of the black wire. So what we're doing now? Just measuring the resistance of the coil, just to make sure. I'm pretty sure the coil's okay. Um, but what you do is if you look up the specific values for your coil. Um, I've got them here. I'll fold that in half so I can see it. So basically, we have got a Lucas Sports DLB 105, quite a common 12 volt coil. Look at the, um, the, the spec on that. It says low tension across the terminals, 2.8 ohms, and from any either of the low tension terminals to the high tension terminal, should be 10.45 kilo ohms. So we set ourselves on to the uh, 200 ohm rate, um, and we'll put the positive terminal into the positive on the coil, there we are, and then we'll put the negative in, we'll hold it there for a second, and let it settle, I'd say the coil's alright, so it's basically coming 2.8 to 3, but it depends, I mean the battery's probably a little bit low in this multimeter, 
it's not been calibrated to this fine level. I'm going to be inclined to say that the coil is okay. Right, next thing we'll do is check from positive to the earth. So I'm just using that onto there. Ah, oh, sorry, we'll go down to the 200 milliamp range. We're looking for 10.45 here. 9.3. That's respectable. I'm doing it onto the lead. That's probably where we're losing a little bit of resistance there. And then if we do the same thing now from the negative terminal. 9.3. Coil's fine. Nothing on the coil. So then I pulled out the plug. So basically we've got plug um, 1, 3, 5, 7, 2, 4, 6 and 8. The plugs are, what are they? Made in France. I think I've just found the problem. French electrics. Love it. Probably just doesn't fancy going. Um, no, they're champions, which is fine. Um, I can't find the, oh we are, NY, RN, 9YCs. I think they're okay. But anyway, what I have noticed is some of them are looking okay. Some of them are really carboned up. Some of them are really mega lean. Carbon. So we've got okay, carboned, lean, carboned. That's eight, six, four, two. And on this side, two. Carbon deposits, nothing particularly serious. I'll recap these after I've done the compression check. Bit on the lean side, that one. Bit on the lean side. That one's even leaner. It's not been power washed. It's not like there's a head gasket problem. Because almost the whole thing would be um, white. But that's a bit on the lean side. And that one is even leaner. So we've got a fuel mix problem, which probably explains the lack of performance. Right. All the plugs are out. Um, I have disabled the LPG solenoid down there, and I'm just going to disable the fuel pump, which is normally, although this thing's got a slave tank, underneath the passenger seat, there's a little plunger. Let's see if we can see him. I can normally feel him, actually. There he is. There's the plunger. And I just lift the plunger up, and that cuts the supply to the fuel pump. Petrol pump. Um, interestingly, even though this thing's not starting, all these pub plugs are bone dry. We're on autofocus, fucking thing. All these plugs are absolutely bone dry, so I think the fuel's not getting through. LPG will not kick in, I don't believe. So it isn't on mine, I don't know the system, but it won't kick in until it detects the engine is running. So it needs fuel in there to start it, to, to actually get it going. So while I've got all the plugs out, I'll give them a clean and I'll do a compression check. So, nice little compression checker, you get loaded, they're all over the bloody place. The key thing with compression is you're looking for a particular setting, but you want all the cylinders to be within, sort of like, you know, 10% of that setting. Um, you don't want to cross thread the thing in, it'd probably be helpful if I had two hands on this rather than one. I'm going to go through and do the compression check. So basically all you do, you wind the compression check into the cylinder, you hold the throttle open really just so it doesn't create a vacuum at the top end of the engine. Um, I've got the fuel cut off so nothing's going to happen. Wind the engine over three turns um, and then take the compression reading. Okay, I'm expecting for a healthy V8, I'm expecting something in the region of 140, 150 across all, all eight cylinders. Right, let's do the last one. Throttle open, ignition on, ignition off. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, One seventy. That's all right. Right. So here's the results. This is the uh, driver's side bank. One seventy. One seventy. One seventy-five. One seventy-five. One thirty. This is number one on the passenger side. 130. Fuck it. 150. Bucker. 180. 170. So cylinders one and three are way below par. What I generally do next is do what's called a wet test. I squirt a good old dollop of oil into the cylinder via the spark plug hole and retest it. Because effectively what that do, if it goes up 
by a significant amount, then it's going to be piston rings or bore wear. If it doesn't really go up by a significant amount, it's more likely to be uh, valves or head gasket. Um, if we ever get the engine running, of course we're going to get the engine running. If we get the engine running, then I can do a block test to find out if it is the head gasket or not. Um, there's only water in this thing at the moment, uh, so I do need to drain it down because we don't like Devon weather causing problems with engines. Um, so let me, next, I'm going to do this wet test on it. So literally all I do is just squirt a big old dollop of engine oil into the, into the spark plug hole, crank it over again, um, and if it seals up, it seals up the piston rings, um, and it gives me a good reading. I mean, it's only a temporary fix. <laughs> It'll only last as long as it takes me to put the spark plug back in again. We then know roughly where the problem is. So spark plug number one. Quite a lot of carbon on it, but not excessive. It's not the worst. And then spark plug number three was excessively lean. And even leaner on five. So, let me do a wet test. The oil in. Let's go and do a compression test. We're on cylinder number one. keys out just in case this thing locks itself. <laughs> um, where did that go to? There it is down there. What have we got? What have we got? What have we got? No better. So that's good news in that it's not likely to be the cylinder bores. It's more likely to be the valve or the um, or the gasket. As miserable as it might look, and I'll just release it and I'm going to do it again, just double check. Are oh, these two keys the same? No, they're not. This car locks itself. I'm in deep shit. <laughs> Don't get the passenger door, I suppose. Uh, right, that went up a tiny bit, but not a lot. Not a significant amount. So it's gone from 130 to 140. I'm going to say that that's a, a, a head or gasket problem. Valve or uh, head gasket or valve issue. Right, let's do number three. In exactly the same method. Wind this chappy out. We're going to get some wheels off a of Range Rover in a minute. Brett wants them. And I said to him, if you want some, you can give me a hand doing it. Right, oily bird. Down he goes. Cylinder number three, which is, I can't get the fucking can round to it. I might have to get the bendy oil can. This has got a bendy nozzle on it, this one. I'll use this one. Is he gonna? Yes, he is. That's good. It's in. It's gonna go in the spark plug hole. I know it. Put a bit of fur around it. There he's in. One, two, three. Good old gloops of oil in there. So as the piston goes up and down, wrecked another glove. As the piston goes up and down it stands a greater chance of sealing the rings if there's a problem with the rings. I'm rather hoping it not to be the case. Only two ends. Right, try again. Check the gauges down to zero. Gauges at zero. Let's do compression check. Keys. Bom, bom, bom. <laughs> what was it before? It was 150 before. Oh, that was gone up quite a long way now. That's gone up to 180. 
180 wet and that was 150 I think wet I'm not worried about any of the others right what I'm going to do next clean these plugs up gap the plugs put them back in again I've also put my ignition on it so I put my cap and rotor on it off my car because this cap is desperate look at how the contacts have melted in there tips have actually melted it's not good um, the rotor however was a Lucas original of the correct spec that's a rarity and it looks alright gaps are all 25 thou I've been cleaning them all up um, and setting them to so on the EFI engines they're 35 to 40 thou of an inch um, they were all 25 or they are all 25 so far I'm just, I'm just cleaning them up a little gentle wire brush around the end just to clean any carbon away and then fitting them back in again. Um, what I'm kind of thinking about here, while the ride of the Valkyrie is going on in the background here, is these contacts that have melted inside this cap here. This is because of an overloaded ignition circuit somehow. I need to research why these are melting. Now, it could be the cap is one of those Chinese cheap replicas that's made out of butter. Um, but I now fear, perhaps, for the ignition amplifier. Because one of the problems that we first identified... Um, earlier on when we were trying to start it out on the road was that the earth wire had fallen off the ignition amplifier now the ignition amplifier has a couple of wires that go from the loom you can see it probably better down there you can see the, the cable and then there's an earth wire that goes in you can see the silver terminal for the earth wire um, and the earth wire wasn't fixed properly um, it was kind of fallen off and I, I was kind of thinking that that was the issue but it still wouldn't start uh, but we've still got this non-fueling issue. Now, um, uh, having a think about this, I don't think that the standard, and bear in mind standard, as in standard over there, standard fuel pump doesn't kick in until it detects a spark at the Sorry. coil. So I need... Right, OK. We're sorting out ignition problems. We've also found that this thing is running very lean. Very, very lean. Far too lean. Um, and that's not good for these things. Um, it causes hot spots and all sorts of things so we need to find out why it's running so lean it could be that the LPG is picking up the wrong signal from the uh, lambdas if it's closed loop we'll find out if it's closed loop so that's far too lean um, it should be closed loop because basically you've got the lambda cables go down over here at the back of the engine bay we can't really see now because it's gone dark the Mr Torchy uh, so there's the connector I can see the connector there you can't see it, but I, can, I recognise that a mile away. I need to find out if it's closed loop. They normally are if they've got some sort of ECU involved and a stepper motor. So this stepper valve here, this fella, that opens and closes uh, and adjusts the flow of the uh, LPG into the inlet manifold, into the plenum. Um, so there must be a reading somewhere that is taken from the Lambda. So I just need to find out where that, that is crimped on. Um, on my LPG box, I've got some lights, which give me an indication as to whether it's running lean or running rich. But we're certainly going to need to adjust this because it's not running right on LPG. It's running far too lean. Right, so I'm going to put the rest of these plugs back in. Put my HT leads on it rather than these HT leads. I know my, basically, I know my HT leads work at the moment. Whereas this, don't drop it, Richard. This... I'm not confident with it. So we'll rest that up there for a moment. Um, we were getting a spark at the plugs, but, you know, perhaps we need to investigate again in the night time and find out if it's a particularly bright spark or whether it's a miserable, weak, horrible little spark. Have a look at all the carbon on that. The leanness and the carbon. This uh, car, by the way, is Aegean Blue. I've not seen an Aegean Blue Range Rover before. Quite like it. Right, put these puppies in. Oh, that's the gravity. I cap these up to twenty to thirty-five to forty rather than twenty-five, and well, I think we're going to stand a better chance. Right, onwards. Let's see what happens now. Everything's all back together again. It was a very red sunset tonight. Very red. You know what they say about red sunsets. In you go.
But well, it's definitely not flooded. I think it's a fueling issue. I'm going to look at the ignition amplifier. That is a really terrible spark there. Um, that's doing nothing at all. So ignition amplifier is next. I'll work out how to test that. So ignition amplifier, for those that don't know, is that little box there that my torch is just above the, the head of my torch, that box there beside the HD lead um, and it screws to the side of the distributor body um, and it's there really to give the uh, the thing a boost. Let, let, one thing I will do, let me just, let, I've got um, a little test lead cable thing here. Let's just force an earth onto it. So I've got a little thing with a couple of crop clips. So what we'll do is we will earth the earth connection because obviously I don't know at the other end of this thing, I can't get my hand in there one-handed, so bear with me. Right, okay, torch on. You can see there I've put the little cable on, earthed it onto the engine. I'll check continuity actually before I go too nuts, make sure the engine earth is good. So if I put this onto the, uh, whatever that is, noisy woisy um, resistance check, put that onto the negative terminal, and put this onto the positive terminal, It's not the best. I've seen better earths. It won't quite reach all the way to the uh, battery. Maybe I've got a longer cable. There's an earth post over here. This will do. Right, let's I'll put it onto that earth post there. Now, let me find the other end of this clip because, of course, the fucking thing flew off the distributor as soon as I breathed on it. That's better. That's a good earth. Right, I'll put this back onto the distributor and we'll try again. Right. So we were getting a spark, but a very, very weak spark. We'll just recheck that. So there's the plug. All right, you can see that. I'm expecting a blue spark, a little weak, weedy, little yellow spark. I really am. And that is a weedy yellow spark, that one. That is doing nothing. Um, and again, just to absolutely confirm, oh, we're working now. We've decided to work. So let's go back to the resistance range. And let's just check the engine earth. One-handed, of course. We love working one-handed. So I'll just wedge that into the negative terminal touch the top of the plenum it's good enough as an engine earth I mean for an ignition circuit that should be bloody howling blue colour this thing doesn't turn itself off anymore I don't know why oh it is that time how weird anyway <sighs> I like my Amical 99 ST9905 it's a good multimeter now um right this will work tomorrow i think the problem is with the ignition amplifier pack it up because it's pissing cold but that will go in the morning it will go on to this again Woohoo! project aegean it can be called i think project aegean yes right um so um we saw from the the previous video the spark is really really weak um i'm draining the cooling system down because um it's got no antifreeze in it at all um and the, the owners told me that already um and we're due for a bit of um cool uh, cool air weather over the next day or two um so i thought i'd drain the cooling system down not have to worry about it um and then i can start getting things like the radiator hoses and so forth out of the way so i can see what's going on and I can actually you know start getting access to things like the distributor and so forth where I think my root cause lies now on the side of the distributor is this little fella here this is a it's, it's, it's ignition module ignition control module amplifier they're called a number of different things this is from an earlier Lucas distributor it's a two pin this one's got a three pin on it I can tell it's got a three pin because it's got the bigger connector on it it works in a completely mystical way now I found no real way of testing these other than plugging them in so plug that into the coil, 
find out which one of these is the live or the trigger feed, put a clamp off it and dab it against an earth. And if you get a spark, then it's working. If you don't get a spark, then it's not working. That's the only way I've found yet to fi find out how these things work. I know that there's a minefield of cheap Chinese copies and Lucas. Um, the distributors of Lucas, is Lucas 35 DLM8. Um, and <sighs> it is a minefield. So because the ignition spark is so weak, that's my primary uh, objective now, is to look inside the distributor at the air gap on the, uh, on, on, yeah, within the distributor and also at the uh, amplifier, the module, module on the side. Now, because the earth was broken on the amplifier, um, it was kind of barely hanging in there. I'm wondering if perhaps the thing has just blown itself up. Also, it could possibly be, and I don't know the history of this thing, could just be a cheap, nasty pattern copy. We don't know these things, do we? I'm right, just um, getting a bit more water out of here. Uh, we're almost out now. I've got to drain the block as well, so I need to get underneath and undo the drain plugs on the side of the block, which is a pain in the bollocks, really. Really could do without it, but never mind. It's coming out. Um, it's easier with things like um, the, the top hose out of the way, certainly when it comes to ignition. You can see it sits right over the top of the distributor. It's a pain in the balls. Um, the other thing that might be easier is... I can actually see the, 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 the nuts down there now. You can see the ignition amplifier. That's that's the amplifier there, that bit. Um, I might need to take the, the uh, alternator or just undo the alternator bracket, take the belt off and just shove that over the top. In fact, that belt's looking properly shagged out. What's that running against? It might need a belt change. We'll look at that later on. I don't want to do too much work on this thing. You end up stripping it apart for the sake of stripping it apart, then it's not really the objective, is it? But, uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do, first of all, with this ignition module. So let me finish draining off this cooling system, and I'll come back to you. Might have found another problem. So here we've got the, uh, this is the wiring diagram for the ignition coil. So ignition coil's there, positive, negative, high tension, low tension. All right, so this is the, it's the inner and the outer field windings on the coil. So we go from fuse box, goes white into the coil, positive. So we've got a white wire, there we are, nice solid white wire goes into the positive side of the coil. I know it's the positive side because I've double checked it. I don't need to show you. Also onto the positive side of the coil, we have got an ignition coil suppressor, suppression capacitor, which is this little box of tricks down here. Um, you can't quite see it because it's hiding, but it's just down there. It's earthed onto the body and it goes onto the other side of the positive. So that then leaves us the, uh, the uh, negative side of the coil. So the negative side of the coil will go through to the uh, ignition control module. This box of jolly fun down here, which I've been suspecting is having a problem. Well, I'm going to double check the continuity on that in a second. That's a white black. There's a second white black, which goes through to the fuel injection um, ignition resistor. So the idea behind this is there's a couple of relays underneath the driver's seat. Um, and that sends a signal back to the fuel injection ignition resistor to say the engine's firing. So we found one wire, this one here black and white and I suspect if I was to do a continuity check it would go back because it's going back in this chunk of loom here over the top of the alternator and coming out here I suspect that one of these wires here will be white and black let's retrieve that spark plug before I forget it's down there uh, will be white and black um, and I will find continuity between that white and black and one of these pins over here so that's fine the other wire that goes on is this one here now this is completely shielded and I haven't cut it back yet but I was tracing it back it goes back up towards the, um, the airflow meter, which I've taken off the car at the moment. Um, and then there's a white and black wire here that's broken off that connector. What do you reckon? Moment of truth. Will it fire? Oh, I don't know if I've got confidence or not. Disappointing. Keep finding fucking problems with this thing. Let's go on to petrol. Notice how long the oil pressure light takes to go out. I'm killing the battery. Killed the battery. I'm giving it a bit of a charge. If it's gone down to 11.8 volts, it's not going to help anybody. Um, so I'm charging the battery up. And while I'm doing that, I thought I would um, start to investigate what the problems are inside. 
So obviously I've, I've done the engine bay loom, fixed the broken wire that was to the fuel pump relay. And then the fuel pump relays and everything are under the driver's seat. Behold. It's actually easy to take the driver's seat out to access this lock. Um, so all of this shenanigans going on up here is all to do with the, uh, the fact that the seat ECU has been removed. Um, it's got a bundle of earths down there for a bundle of relays. Um, this is a Vogue SE, so it would have had memory seats originally, but it hasn't got any more because the switch is gone and the ECU is gone. Um, but uh, that's easy enough to sort out. Anyway, what we've basically got under here are a bundle of wires for the air suspension, which it hasn't got either the engine ECU and the pair of relays that I'm specifically interested in. One of those is the ignition control and one of them is the um, fuel injection. Right, we've got something truly fucking bizarre going on now. I haven't really done anything. I found my, um, my old Steve Heath Engineering Limited. You can't get these anymore. Uh, but Steve Heath Engineering Limited um, ECU fault reader plugs directly into the diagnostic port on the ECU. Just get ready to plug that in. So I'll just try and see if it starts. Right, okay, so watch. Why the fuck are the hazards gone on? Turn the ignition off, take the key out, hazards are still on. We've got some issue here. Now, the customer had already mentioned that there are, if I turn the ignition back on again, the ignition goes on and the hazards stop working. Take the key out, hazards stay off. Now, the customer did mention to me that he had some weird anomalies um, around the sunroof opening and so forth when he turned the ignition on, tried to start. I think we've got some earth-related problems. So what I might do is have a look at the main body earths that sit under here. Um, as you can hear, it's blowing quite, quite a breeze to it today. Um, something is going wrong, bizarrely wrong. I haven't even tugged anything around down here yet. That's weird though, isn't it? I don't know why that would happen, or why it would suddenly start happening. So ignition in, not touching anything. Ignition on, start. Indicators on. Turn it on again, off. Something's weird, something's gone wrong. Something's gone wrong. Right, all of this lot here is largely to do with the air suspension. I don't think we've got any air suspension. I think all the air suspension connectors can probably be undone because we haven't got any air suspension. So let's decomplicate this loom. <sighs> Why is life not easy, eh? Um, I need to take the ECU. If I take the ECU out and I can then um, put it back on the other way around. So let me do that. Take the connector off the front of the ECU because there's something weird going on here. Right, let me do this two handed. Right, undone the electric seats, uh, and we've still got the issue with the indicators, the hazards coming on. So, the next thing I'm going to do is have a look in here. I'm going to need to unpick the, uh, the, 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 the loom and really find out what is going on in here. So, it means I'm wrapping it. Um, it's all kind of tucked in here underneath. Oh, let's just check this switch doesn't do. Let's take the fucking switch off. So just get to the switch. No, it still does it. What I'm also gonna do, because this thing's gonna fuck the um, battery up again, I'm just gonna disconnect the uh, circuit for the LPG. Not the LPG, what are you talking about, Richard? For the ABS, so I just need to pull this connector off here. There we are, he's off. So now when I turn the ignition on, I shouldn't be getting the LPG pump running. It doesn't matter, I don't want the pump running. I don't want this thing constantly pressurizing. <laughs> just gonna try and simplify this thing. Right, now what are we gonna do down here? So this thing here, this is the main loom that goes into the ECU. And it's got a sock over it, which I might end up having to cut off. And obviously the wrap that goes around it. So let me unpick. Right, kind of getting a little bit closer. The blue wires, blue, 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 are from the ECU via these symbols here to the <coughs> <coughs> lambda sensors. Okay, 
and then they come off with a black and slate which goes down to distribution goes down to earth which is what all this black and slate is here so it looks like someone's peeled this back to have a look at it for some reason um, and not re-insulated it so someone's been here before i've been here unpicked it all reconnected it all so that's done that um a lot of this stuff under here by the way is all to do with the um air suspension so if i go underneath the car here there's the bag under there uh all to do with the air suspension wiring which to be honest i'm probably gonna yank the whole fucking lot out all to do with air suspension there's no tank there's no nothing under here so it can all come out get the circuit for the air suspension but it would look like it comes in from the loom by these connectors and then we've got all of this crap here which goes to over here and it's all of these relays and stuff the whole lot is air suspension none of it's needed because we haven't got air suspension on the car anymore that's all the air suspension it remains the air suspension loom out of the way so these two connectors are for air suspension don't need them we haven't got air suspension on the car so it's tidied up under here immeasurably i need to recover the grommet cracking toast because um, it needs to go back on the floor down here. There's a fucking great hole down on the floor. With the ECU right above it. So we need to fill that hole up. Okay. Right. And a step forward. And I found the tune resistor as well. I've been looking for him. It was strapped on. There's all manner of weird bits of things strapped in weird places on underneath here, but like I say, I've not played with a um, Vogue SE before, not to this level anyway. I've done Vogues, not Vogue SE. Looks a little bit tidier now, doesn't it? Without all that air suspension wiring under there, so there's a lot more room under there. Now I'm going to get this panel under here. So these things coming off, there's normally a screw behind here, only two fingers to do that. So screw, take that panel out, screws going up there, up there, screw up there. There's a screw up there, and then there's two screws at the bottom either side, and then this whole panel can come out. Right, let's get on with um, diagnosing this ECU now. Um, so it's all plugged in, got all the other crap out of the way. I've been up and found the um, main body mount, which is up here. It's the white block you can just about see up there. That white block um, is the, all the earth for the main part of the loom. Um, I've loosened that off and attached it back onto the bulkhead because uh, that might have caused the problems with the hazard lights. I've also taken the steering wheel, it takes 10 seconds to take the steering wheel off, uh, and also the steering column controls, because I want to look at the back of the ignition switch. But let's uh, see what happens now. Oh! Oh! Bloody hell, there it goes. <laughs> so I think that that was, in the end, I think that was that earth problem. I mean, okay, I've taken the cover off the ECU, but I tried to start it again after that. It didn't want to know. In fact, I've just started to rig up all the earth wires and everything so I could check fuses and so forth. How bizarre. Good car. Right, okay. Now, now plan, what we're we gonna do now? Right, I'm gonna go and get some antifreeze. I need five liters of antifreeze in here because I've drained the water out of the radiator. If I put five liters in, then I can warm this car up. Um, at the moment, I can't warm it up because <laughs> I've got no coolant in it. I don't wanna run it for too long. So I don't think I've got any antifreeze here. Bom, 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 bom. <sighs> Oh, that makes me happy. What have we got here? Antifreeze, ATF, brake fluid, engine oil. I don't think I've got any antifreeze. Oh, antifreeze. I have got antifreeze. Look at that. Don't have to go out. That's good news. Let's dump some antifreeze in there. What is this? Is this blue glycol or is this? 
This is Universal Blue Antifreeze. So 50-50 give you protection up to minus 36. I can't believe it started. Well, I can believe it started because it's me. <laughs> and I've put the original cap and rotor back on it again as well. But the cap is knackered. And the cap needs changing. The leads are salvageable. Cap is, needs changing, definitely. Rotor's fine. It's a Lucas item. And also, I'm still not happy with the strength of the spark. And I know the vacuum advance is dead. Fucking hell. Started. Woo -hoo. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say, really. <laughs> Flabbergasted. Right, one thing I haven't done. I, I disconnected all this tonight because... Um, because I didn't want to run the pump every time I started the engine up. That's outstanding. Good car. Right, okay, let's get some antifreeze in here. Um, I just need to give the customer a call to find out whether he had yellow or, red or blue in there, but... Can't tell, unfortunately, because it was, it was all just plain water. It's going in with um, blue. It's the most likely 